Energy Media Readers, this is another interview about hydrogen with Thomas Koch Blank from Rocky Mountain Institute. Welcome to the interview, Thomas. Thank you, Marco. So what we're going to be talking about now is hydrogen and heavy industry. And this is uh, heavy industry is currently uh, uses a lot of heat and it's created by uh, coal or by natural gas. But hydrogen is a potential replacement. Can you give us a little bit of an, an overview of that one, Thomas? So hydrogen is explored as an alternative fuel for industry in applications which are hard to electrify. So if you take a, a big step back and if you, uh, if you indeed aspire to decarbonize the industry sectors, um, there are some activities that, uh, that you can just switch or not. I, I, I make it sound very simple, but, but technology wise, not from an economic perspective, you can shift from fossil fuels to electricity. Uh, but there are some applications where that is hard and it's either, there are really two cases. One is if you're looking at really high temperature applications where you would need electric plasmas or other, uh, other technologies to reach the same temperatures, or it's, it's processes where the fossil fuel is just not adding temperature or energy. It's also a catalyst in a chemical reaction. Okay, great. Now, I, I, one thing I'm really curious about is that as we build up the renewable energy uh, generation capacity, so we're talking about more solar farms and more wind farms and who knows more hydro and tidal and whatever else we might come up with. And, and the cost continues to fall and we get down in the one to two cent a kilowatt hour uh, range. And those, that, that, those you know, uh, wind and solar farms are generally uh, located in rural areas. So could we potentially see uh, rural areas getting a leg up, a, having a competitive advantage on making hydrogen because they can produce electricity so cheap? Short answer is yes. I think if you look at industrial footprint globally and historically, you've seen exactly that happen several times where industry has relocated to where electricity is cheap. So as a couple of examples, you have the aluminum refining industry locating on, in places like Iceland or South Africa, uh, where they have been offered really low cost electricity. And probably this has been used by governments as well to attract industry to the economy, right? And if you look at the steel industry and the rise of China as a major steel maker in the 90s, that was largely because they had access to low cost cooking coal. Now, you could imagine, and it's not even a stretch, that you indeed do reach cost levels for renewable electricity that are in the range where electrified processes are competitive. And uh, that, um, that will bring opportunities to the, the areas with low cost electricity that could be really attractive. And, and I would argue even a lot more attractive than the renewable industry itself because it will, you know, it will employ people over time and uh, have a higher valued product coming out of the industry. Uh, I, again, it, may, it might not be a stretch or maybe this is fanciful thinking on my part, but one could almost look down the road 25 or 50 years and see this reshaping of the industrial landscape based on where you can put wind farms and solar farms and generate cheap electricity. That's correct. I think, and the, and the, the way you need to uh, put the question on its head a little bit is how do we, instead of trying to bring cheap renewable energy to where industry is today, how can we utilize the resources we have in terms of good solar and wind resources to attract industries to where you have that resource? And that is true for sure in the US in some regions, you, you already have curtailed power in the grid and that's a good starting point in the near term. But as you utilize that curtailed power, you will also longer term have you know, the one to two cents per kilowatt hour power that you can use. Well, final question, Thomas, and, and I guess this is uh, related to your, your last comment, which is that if you can do that, then you can also, one of the products that you can make is green hydrogen. And right. that then, of course, has all sorts of other benefits around uh, heating and potentially heating homes and uh, other, th you know, other places where you need heat. Is that, would that be a fair comment? That is definitely a fair comment. Thomas, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll look forward to chatting with you about hydrogen and transportation in our next interview. Of course.